So Horse Ranch came out last week. Thanks EA for the early access through the EA Creator Network. This pack slaps. It slaps so hard I built out a 64 by 64. Yeah. So anyway, hi, it's been a year. Editing for YouTube is hard. I'll try to do it more. Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> Anyways, with my early access, I built a vineyard because I had already built a horse ranch in base game like the week before and I was like, I don't want to burn myself out on horse ranches, so I didn't. Anyway, here's the build. <laughs> Welcome to The Sims trademark for horse ranch. Thank you so much. First, I have to enter my cheat codes like the ancient times and then run into it head first because I didn't even know I wanted it. They were like horses and I was like, horses? Because of who I am as a person, I was like, I'll, like, I'll, I'll have cowboy horses, like, you know, like yeehaw horses, not like cottage core whimsical horses but those would be cool too i'm sure but as someone whose like main genre on spotify is like sad cowboy music i feel uh targeted you know a target audience reached ea okay i see you and before you say leave i saw the thumbnail you're not even making a horse ranch well first of all <laughs> thank you for looking at my thumbnail and second of all i just built a horse ranch just not with horse ranch it's base game but a horse can still live in it a horse can live in any place in this pack except for apartments i think so you know what it's Fine. You know what I was thinking would be so funny if I like got this like early access and it was like amazing and then I just like built a base game house in Chestnut Ridge. I'm like, hey guys, here's the new pack, check it out. And you could just like see it vaguely in the background. But I didn't do that because I'm a brave person. Speaking of brave, this is a 64 by 64 lot. It's the only one that came with the pack. Like, who do I think I am? Juby Sims? I don't know what I'm doing here. This pack even came with a 20 by 15 and I talk about those like it's nobody's business. But like, I couldn't take a vineyard on a 20 by 15. <laughs> that just ends up setting. That's like two grapes. But I don't know how many grapes are even at a vineyard. I've never been to a vineyard. Even though there's like this magical place in Ontario where I am from called Niagara-on-the-Lake, which like, first of all, you've heard of Niagara Falls. Let's put it on a lake. It's touristy, but like classy touristy. And like, I've been there, but have I seen one of the 25? Yes, there are 25, I checked. Vineyards? No, absolutely not. The most I know about vineyards is that I'm pronouncing it the American way, and also I saw that one movie that has Sandra Oh in it, and she like went to a vineyard with this guy. I literally don't remember anything else that happened in that movie. Okay, sorry, this was bothering me. I looked it up. It's called Sideways, and it's from 2004. And the plot line is literally that there is a guy, and he just is a wine enthusiast. That's literally what Google says. It's a struggling writer and wine enthusiast, Miles Paul Giamatti, takes his engaged friend, Jack, Thomas Hayden Church, on a trip to wine country for a last single guy bonding experience. A last single guy bonding experience. Right, okay. <laughs> living at large, boys, living at large. And that's essentially all I know about wine, other than like when you were a kid and you would have juice in a wine glass and you'd like swirl it around as if you knew anything about aeration. <laughs> but I did look at Pinterest for inspiration images for this, so that's basically the same as being an expert. <laughs> if I was an expert at everything I saw on Pinterest, I feel like I would be a much more rounded person. Also, I feel like I have to mention the little bouncing blue rectangle that says my name in it. I was so distracted by it while I was building. It's like those videos of like entire classrooms getting really, really excited when the little like DVD logo hits the corner. Except my name never hits the corner, it just kind of flies around. Occasionally getting in the way of swatch options because of how absurdly small I keep my UI in this game. Like if it's any bigger than how I have it, right now I like get upset. Basically I don't want to be able to uh see <laughs> to the extent that every time I turn on the game it gets mad at me for it. It's like reset settings to default and I'm like absolutely not and it's like UI might be cut and I'm like okay good for it. It's a risk I'm willing to take to keep it so so tiny. I just like seeing more options at once I guess. I don't actually like to not see you guys. Come on I got you there. But maybe I do like to not see because straight up I went to the optometrist and they were like oh you have great vision you can see so well and I was like thank you so much. I uh grew these eyes myself and they were like okay weird anyway you don't need glasses and i was like okay fine 
that's fine. But my brother wears glasses and I put his glasses on once and I could like see better. But I know even less about eye health than I do about wine enthusiasts. So who even knows? Anyway, watching this back, I'm like seeing the mixture of lots that I felt that this was when I was making it. Because really it's like a resort thing because it has the whole pool situation going on. But then there's also like the actual like basement that they keep the wine in but then there's also like living space that it just looks like a regular house like there's no hotel rooms or anything it just looks like a house so i don't really know what this is but i do know that it's play tested and on the gallery when this pack officially comes out so <laughs> there's one thing i do know <laughs> yeah. but this was a venture to me to build on a 64 by 64 because i have never once in my life finished a build on a 64 by 64 and the ones that i did in like 2016 don't count because they were bad. They were blocks with windows and not even the fun kind. I remember my first 64 by 64 so vividly. I literally, I was making a mansion in Windenburg on that giant lot on the island and I was making it for a, like an intention legacy family that I was gonna have and the dad was gonna be a chef and the mom was gonna be a doctor and they were gonna have two twin boys and they were gonna have a teenage daughter. And that was literally like the whole plan. That was the whole plan. And I thought about it for so long and I built their stupid mansion and it was so bad. And I remember I made it too big because I don't know how to do scale in this game. And honestly, I still don't know how to do scale in this game. But I remember having so many seating areas and this was before we had platforms. So like I would just delete the floor to have like a sunken living room and it was like a whole situation. But the whole point of this is that I never even finished that house. I didn't finish that house because I got so burnt out building on a 64 by 64 that I literally didn't play that save ever again. And then in 2020, I was like, you know what? Maybe I still want my chef, dad, doctor, mom, twin child, boys teenage girl household and i had it and i played that legacy for six generations until like 2021 and then i started streaming in the summer of that year and then i just never played that family again but they're still out there with their six gens of family like they're still there i was even on one of those like legacy family tree websites for them because of how invested i was in them and oh my god i swear sometimes the lore wrote itself because i remember the most dramatic thing to ever happen in that game was the chef and the doctor's daughter moved out on her own. She was gonna be a violinist. It was gonna be a big thing for her because she had her own loft space that I was actually obsessed with. It was like my favorite build that I ever done and it was hers. And then she had this boyfriend from high school named Nicholas who was born from some people in city living, I think. And like, so, okay, so he moves in, right? He moves in to her house. And I was like, that's fine because they're in love. Like they're probably gonna get married. That'll be really nice for them. It was gonna be a beautiful high school sweetheart story with a happily ever after. They were gonna have kids and she was gonna be famous. And I don't know what he was gonna do, but he was probably gonna do something nice too anyway. Did it go that way? Absolutely not. The first, the first night in this beautiful loft house I made for them to live out their life in, my Samira is sleeping and and her boyfriend Nick is in the shower and he gets a call on his phone and I'm like oh who's calling him because I didn't know about his like relationships because he had never been like a sim in my household I only knew like his parents and then I think his brother I had so much hope in him but anyway the call is from this horrible woman who's like hey Nicholas uh just thought you should know that I just gave birth to our twin baby boys and I was like what? And I never knew how meta to be when I play The Sims, right? Like, I don't know if, like, because I know that means my sim knows, but she was, like, sleeping when he got the phone call, so it wouldn't really make any sense. So I was like, oh my god, pretend Mira, like, went through his phone because she was, like, looking for an appointment time or something that they had for, like, I don't know, like, a loan or something. I don't know, okay? I get the lore's really intense. But anyway, she goes on his phone and sees, like, oh my god, hey, Nicholas, I'm just why you know we had two twin baby boys. And it's like, oh my god, Nicholas, we were everything together. You betrayed me. Yeah, so basically she did that. And then she had a whole moment and had like a one night stand with Salim Benali and she had a daughter with Salim Benali on that one night, which also blew my mind because I had just turned on MCCC's risky woohoo setting because I didn't know it existed. 
And it was, I, I mean, it went, really was risky. Like, they weren't lying. But eventually she settled down and had a happy life with one of those cast sims that, like, loads in all the time when you go to make a sim. And she became a global celebrity with a nice farmhouse in Willow Creek, and then she died. As all sims eventually do, unless you keep them alive because you can't let go. Which, like, I'm not gonna say that I keep my lifespan on short. You know what I'm saying? Like, it might be a bit on the, uh, lengthy side. And don't even get me started about animals in this game. I have not seen an animal die in my game of The Sims 4, and I will not. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that I saw a clip of a chicken dying in this game, and I literally cried. Whoever at EA is making those animations, I just want to talk. Like, I can have Sims dying left and right, but animals? Horses? What about the horses? I'm too sensitive to witness a cartoon horse death. So at this point in the build, I was at peace with not having tool mod, with like this little cliff situation here. I deleted all my debug objects that I was hoarding and decided that because it's a vineyard, it should probably be like a functional one because this game has nectar making now with this pack. And the grapes out front are just like for decoration, but I just put a guard in here so that you could like actually have grapes and strawberries and apples and whatever else you can make nectar with in this game. And also so I didn't have to make the front functional because it's like a whole level terrain situation and I'm not trying to feel pain in that way. So you'll just get a flat functional garden as the Sims gods intended. It feels like an excessive garden, to be honest, but honestly, I feel like gardens are kind of overpowered in the Sims, so why not have a giant one? Also, you'll probably need the amount of money that you can get from gardening to, you know, upkeep this property, because it's an absurd amount of simoleons. I don't, I don't really know what happened. Honestly, okay, maybe some of, some, most of, okay, most of the money that went into this build went to rocks. I would just like to say that it's not my fault that the rocks are 75 simoleons each. And there's like 200 of them. That also, well, that is my fault, actually. It just has to be that way, okay? It, it's the energy of this build. Who am I to deny this 64 by 64 lot some rocks, okay? This build can have whatever it wants. Honestly, it's so huge that it can just do that. It has a mind of its own at this point, but that's mostly just because I don't have the brain capacity to think fully through a 64 by 64 lot. This is a great definition of winging it. Which, wing, <laughs> this is so random. Winging it was the name of this like show that came on at like 3 a.m. on the Disney channel, which is basically the family channel, but I guess like the Canadian version. <laughs> and I don't remember it ever having like a daytime slot. I feel like they saved the daytime slots for like really popular shows at the time, like Hannah Montana and like Wizards of Waverly Place and like Good Luck Charlie and all those, you know, great shows. But then it would be like 11 p.m. and it would start to play like the obscure ones like winging it and life with Derek and naturally Sadie and other ones that I don't remember the name of because they were so niche and like some of them slapped like life with Derek kind of slapped even my mom liked that show so it would play all those shows from like 11 p.m. and then at 5 a.m. it would do this like whole thing and it would say you're watching Family Channel. Welcome to another broadcast day. And it would be as loud as the THX logo, and if you were any sort of sleeping, uh, no, you weren't anymore. Like, good morning, I said it was another broadcast day. And then it would play, like, little cartoons that were playing for, I guess, like, toddlers that were awake at that time. So I would usually change the channel to, like, Jeopardy or something at that point. For all the times that I was awake past 5 a.m. as a literal child, you know? Much has remained the same. It's currently 3.19. Off topic of my childhood sleeping troubles, I am obsessed with the wood swatches in this pack. Every single, like, weathered item in this game gets me wild. And with the base game update that came out yesterday, there's like the, the base game door that has those same wooden swatches. I love it so badly. It is identical energy to that one column from Werewolves. You know the one, it's like a little bit wonky. <laughs> and I always wish that it came in more like wood tones and now we can have more wood tones in weathered columns in Horse Ranch by The Sims 4 2023. I feel like every time I do voiceovers, I need to calm down. Like by the end of that last sentence, I was leaning on my chair and like throwing my hands in the air. <laughs> I just get very excited about the wood swatches in this pack. And just like the werewolf column, 
them they're versatile even if they don't mean to be. I can shove a weathered wooden column anywhere and make it work. It also looks like it smells really good. Like it reminds me of when I would be in woodshop class and there would be sawdust all over my clothes and I'd be like, ugh. <laughs> this whole pack probably, minus the horses, probably smells good. Horses don't smell bad per se. Mostly they smell fine unless they're like sweaty, but that's probably true for people too. So not even probably, just really. That's really true. Speaking of smells, every time I tell anyone my favorite smell, I get looks. And I guess like I understand because when I say it out loud, it sounds vile. <laughs> but I just love it so much. And I feel like it's not that different from when people say their favorite smell is like old books. I feel like that's a really common thing for people to say. And everyone is like fine with that. They're like, oh, that's so poetic and beautiful. I guess mildew is the best way of describing my favorite scent. And I know, I know that that is literally probably the smell of like bacteria breeding. But at what point do I just allow myself joy? <laughs> and if something's like obscenely moldy, like obviously that's nasty, but I'm not talking about mold. I'm talking about like you go down into an old basement and it like smells like an old basement or like, I don't know, like you go into a tent and it smells like a tent. That's all I'm saying. Honestly, it's probably more the attachment to that smell than the smell, but I might just be defending myself. <laughs> okay, sorry. I know we were just talking about the wood swatches, but honestly, I could see myself using these wood swatches in like every build I ever do in the future. Like the wood looks like the kind of wood that a table would be made out of like in like Skyrim. And then with that, it looks like it would have a map on it that looks like a project from like fifth grade where you would have like the edges be burnt and you would spill tea on it so that it would look aged. It's exactly the same. One time in history class, I had an assignment where I had to do something like that. Like we had to make like a prop or something and then also dress up as like a merchant in ancient Egypt. And I did it, like I made my little prop and stuff, but the day of, I forgot that it was that <laughs> time to like dress up and stuff for class. I only realized this when I got there and saw that everybody had their like cool costumes and stuff. Well, not everybody. Some people had really cool costumes because they were trying really hard. And I forgot my stuff. So uh, my costume ended up being a reusable grocery bag. Anyway, I made a custom floor in the kitchen. I love quarter tiles, don't you? This was also the point in the build where I realized this lamp that is a table lamp snaps to the wall for some reason, so that's fun. Because this isn't the final version of the software, I'm sure it'll be patched out at some point, but I had a <laughs> good time placing it. Or who am I to stop a table lamp from thinking it's a wall lamp? Like, it's living its dreams. Maybe I should just shut up. It also doesn't matter that much because I ended up using that lamp in like 12 different spots. <laughs> but that's because it's a mansion and needs lots of lamps. But I feel like Mansions need a lot of most things. Like, every time I build one, I'm like, I have to build like seven bedrooms now. And I try to make them all different, but I try to make them like vague enough so that like your sim could just fit in. Your sim could just move in and be right at home. But then also not too vague that it feels like an open house with no soul. Because it is very easy to do that in a 64 by 64 build that you decided to do for some reason. Why? <laughs> Why did you do that? Can you remind me? But then what else can you put in a big house other than seating areas? You know, once I have my five seating areas and my two libraries and my home theater, which I did not have to stoop to this time because the house itself actually is not that large. It's mostly just the grounds and I'm whining for no reason, essentially. <laughs> but what's left after that? I feel like at the point you've added a full home gym to a house, I feel like then you're out of ideas, <laughs> which is me every time I build a mansion and why I tend to stick to smaller lots, which isn't as true as it used to be. Like I used to only build on like 30 by 30 max. But like, I'm at peace with bigger lots now. They just take me a hot second to finish. But I'm not afraid of them. They don't invoke fear in me like they used to. I think I just like 20 by 15s because you can shove so much detail in there without like taking that much time. I don't even know if there's room for a basement on a 20 by 15, which honestly fine because I don't like making basements. What is this nonsense trying to get an open basement? But the basement actually serves a purpose this time <laughs> because the nectar you make ages faster a basement, which I guess makes sense because of that, you know, one movie I saw about it. I'm sure Paul Giamatti and Sandra Oh talked about it at some point. I haven't even 
thought about that movie in years, and I've mentioned it twice in 20 minutes. I don't even, like, like that movie that much. I just watched it one time with my dad, and now it's all I can think about. This is me trying to make all the bedrooms different. I was like, this one has a yellow motif, and this one has a green motif, but also with brown accents, which doesn't really mean much because this entire build has brown accents. Actually, I wouldn't even say they're accents. It has brown features. The house is brown. It's a brown house. Resort, vineyard thing. It's multi-purpose in a way no one needed, <laughs> but I couldn't not have a pool or like a source of water on a 64 by 64. They scream for a water feature. They're like, water feature! No! And I'm like, okay, no need to twist my leg. Twist, twist my ankle, pull my ankle, pull my leg. What is the saying? <laughs> I looked it up and it's twist my arm, which was none of the options that I just gave. Awesome. I feel like I was mixing up pull my leg and twist my arm there. I don't know what happened. My search history recording this voiceover is honestly wild. It's like Sandra O wine movie. What causes mildew? What is the saying that goes twist or pull my arm? We're learning so much together. This feels like an education journey for us. Oh yeah, I also added a wedding venue. <laughs> I feel like people get married at vineyards. I don't know. I Like I said, I've never been to a vineyard nor have I gotten married so i really i'm really not sure i'm like you know a professional on the subject but i know that there are vineyard wedding venues and that people have made them in the sims because i remember once when i was watching claire siobhan and her gameplay series is, is, is someone got married at a vineyard i don't remember who it was but someone did and if claire siobhan isn't the authority in most things in my life then i don't know what to say so after i added lights to literally everywhere on this entire lot i did the terrain painting of the entire lot and i feel like this actually both of those together took a solid 40 minutes which is why i did them last and i don't usually save things for last but i feel like with a build this big i needed to because i wasn't gonna do it like in the middle which is also a reason i feel i can't do speed builds because my builds are so all over the place in my workflow. I'll just be like decorating a bedroom and then I'll be like, you know what? I think the kitchen needs an extra utensil jar on the counter. So then I'll just do that and then I'll go to the kitchen and add the utensil jar on the counter and then I'll get distracted by the dining room and be like, oh, this needs another hutch or I should put another plant here. And that translated into a speed build means that it would probably need to have a flash warning, which I actually did have on a video that I posted last year, which was actually the last video that I'm posting. We're not gonna talk about that. And then on top of the flashy, like going back and forth thing, I... <laughs> I build forever. My footage is so long. The footage I have for this build is 12 hours. <laughs> and I know that not all of that footage was me building. Like a lot of the time I get up and walk away and like go see Sully or something. But still, I have some other Sims creators who do speed builds how much they speed up their footage by. And all of them said like 300 to 700 ish. And I was like, what do you mean? That would still take me to like a two and a half hour speed build video. <laughs> Like, that isn't even a speed build, that's just a build video. That is at the pace of like a million kilometers an hour for no reason. But I've gotten faster at building, so I guess that's a good thing. I can hear you saying that 12 hours isn't fast, but you know what, it's an increase. It used to take me 12 hours for like a 20 by 30, so honestly I'll take what I can get. Every time I do terrain stuff, I wonder how I did terrain stuff before they gave us like the extra tools two summers ago. Like, do you remember that? We only had like a couple of size options. That was wild times. So after this was finally done and I added a garbage can because I forgot one like any good simmer, you know how it is. Let's take a dramatic drone shot view of it. This turned out absolutely gorgeous. I really, really love this pack. I do dabble in cast and gameplay, but at heart, I'm a build mode girly. And this pack had everything that a build girly would want. It felt like when I was going through the high school years catalog and I was like, whoa, there's so many furniture items. Like once again, whoa, there's so many furniture items. And the debug items, man, oh man. I'm sure I'll build something like actually horse related in this pack eventually, but this one is for those of you that like the nectar making feature of things. I had a couple people on Twitter, or X now I guess, tell me that nectar making was their favorite part of The Sims 3, which I love that. I never 
haven't played The Sims 3 really. I know like one cue card of information about The Sims 3. I played on Xbox, I didn't have any DLC, and my game usually crashed right after I exited Create a Sim, which like I still had a great time with, I'm not gonna deny that, but I'm not gonna say it was like a full experience of the game, you know? <laughs> I'm probably missing a tidbit of information or two. I know that Katy Perry Sweet Treats was a thing and like do I really need to know anything else? Anyway, thanks for following along on my journey of building a 64 by 64 and completing it for the first time. And thanks again to EA for inviting me to the early access opportunity. This was a silly, li I was gonna say silly little. This was a silly big build and I hope to see you in the next video that will hopefully be posted before next year. <laughs> I'll see you later.